Hey there, this video is going to be a deep dive into the Canon R7 and its low light and high ISO capabilities. And I figured it'd be appropriate to start off this video in low light. <laughs> I'm shooting on the R7 right now at ISO 6400 and the only lights I'm using right now are these two candles. I'm curious how this looks. But anyways, in this video, I'll be doing a bunch of detailed tests looking at how the R7 does in that middle and high ISO range. There's a few settings we can tweak in this camera. And of course, I'll compare it against the R5C. I am really looking forward to testing out this camera and I'm sure you're interested in the results. But before we get into the tests and the results, I wanna take a moment to talk about crop sensors in general, because there's a lot of misunderstandings. If you're curious about understanding this in depth, there's a really nerdy video, which I'll leave down below, that explains everything to do with crop factors, crop sensors, depth of field, noise levels, field of view, and all that kind of stuff. I recommend anyone that's in a photo or video, check that out and really understand it, because as I said, there are a lot of mis misunderstandings or misconceptions about it. Now keep in mind, no matter what size your sensor is, the exposure will still be the same at a given aperture and given ISO. It doesn't matter if you're full frame, crop sensor, micro four third, the exposure will still be the same. But one thing that does change is the noise. So the noise will be higher with a smaller sensor size at the same ISO given all other things are kept the same. But there are a lot of factors, including the actual sensor of the camera. And there are some additional factors that I wanna hit on really quickly here too. Now, a lot of people have have the, the understanding that if you have a lower megapixel uh, sensor, then you'll have better low light. And the reason for that is if you have a given resolution, you have less pixels or less megapixels, each pixel will be larger and allow it to gather more light, giving you a cleaner um, image in low light. Now, there's another thing that comes into play here, which is oversampling. And until recently, there wasn't as many cameras that did that oversampling. But cameras like the R7, the R5C, the A7 IV, they all oversample the image. And in that oversampling, I don't know all the magic that happens, but it compresses the noise and makes it look cleaner. I was getting cleaner images out of mid-range ISOs on the A7 IV than I was over the FX3 or A7S III. So you gotta keep that in mind. There's oversampling and their other thing is noise reduction in the camera, which we'll talk about those settings. Now, before we get into the test, which I promise are coming soon, the R7 comes out of the box with a limitation on the ISO. So make sure if you wanna push the camera a little bit harder, you can go into the settings and change the ISO range. It comes standard at 12,800 and you can change it to 25,600 and that will give you the max that this camera can do. Now, onto the tests, but let me explain the parameters. I shot everything in 4K fine in 24 frames per second. I use the RF 15 to 35 lens that are on 20 millimeters, F4, and the shutter speed was one over 50. The way I got my exposure was using a gray card and setting my zebras at 40%, and I would get the proper exposure by using one key light. I would raise the ISO and then lower the key light until I got the proper exposure for middle gray on my gray card, and I just stepped up through the range. So take a look at the test here, and then I'll talk about it.
wow, I am definitely impressed with the results of the R7. I did forget to mention this was all shot in C-Log3 in Cinema Gamut. Now, my interpretation here is that the R7 was good up to 6400 and maybe even usable up to 8000 and it was still pretty solid up to 16000 if you needed to use it in a pinch up that high. Above 16000 I really do think it started to fall apart but that is definitely more than I expected to get out of the R7. One thing we can do with this camera is adjust the noise reduction in the camera. You don't have a lot of settings but there are a few in there so let me show you where you can get this in the menu system. Out of the box, it is set up as standard, and that's how I ran all these tests was in standard. But you can change it from disabled to low to standard to high. So I was curious about how this would work, so take a look and see what you think. The results from this were actually very interesting to me. I didn't really see a big difference between the disabled or off, the low and the standard, but I noticed there was a huge difference between the standard and the high setting. So this is something you might want to play around with if you're looking for you know, a cleaner image out of camera. Of course, if you're looking for more control, just keep it off and then do your noise reduction in post. But a lot of times you're looking for a quick turnaround or you're okay with the way it looks, you have that option in the camera. Before we get on to comparing the R5C with the R7, I just wanna thank the sponsor of this video and that's all of you for making this possible, for making this channel possible, for liking these videos and using the affiliate links down below. They really help out the channel. So if you're looking for any of the gear that I use, they're all listed down below. I'd really appreciate you check out some of that stuff. Now, if you're curious about how the R7 compares with the R5C, I made a whole detailed video about that too, which I'll leave linked down below. Really checking out if the R7 could be a good B cam to the R5C because they're both oversampled images and they do, <laughs> they are pretty close. Now for the R5C in these, in these tests here, I did apply a little bit of noise reduction in camera. I made a whole video about the noise reduction settings on the R5C again, I'll leave that link down below as well. And for this, I used a middle ground setting of the spatial filter set at four and the frame correlation set at two, which is kind of how I've been using the R5C lately. And I think it also is pretty comparable to the standard setting of the noise reduction in the R7. I did the exposure very similar in the R5C as in the R7, it's just I used false color. So I set the exposure, I raised the ISO and lowered the key light and then used false color to get middle gray on the gray card. Take a look at this comparison and I'll and then we'll talk about it.
Now the results from this were surprising and not surprising at the same time. I think the R5C clearly wins in that middle range. And the reason for that is that the R5C, as most of you probably know, has a second base ISO of 3200. And you can really see that it cleans up really well from 2500 to 3200. And I think it definitely wins in that middle range up to about 6400. I think it's 6400. I think it evens out up to about 10,000, but at 12,800 and up, I think the R7 loses a little bit of detail at that point. And I'm not sure if this is just because of the focus, because in the shot it was focusing on my face, not on the, um, the color checker. But either way, I think it loses a little bit of detail, but the noise is roughly the same. Well, if you can't tell, <laughs> I'm very impressed with the results out of the R7. As I said, in C-Log3 and 4K Fine, I think you're good up to 6400 and I definitely think you could push it to 8000 or 10000 if you wanted to and you could apply that high level of noise reduction in the camera just to get a little bit more range out of the low light in this camera. Really impressed. I know a lot of you had questions about it and there'll be a lot more content coming up about the R7 so if you enjoy that and other cool videography and content creation and camera gear stuff, please consider hitting subscribe down below. It'd be greatly appreciated. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.